Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to dive into another computational biology video and we're going to learn something very interesting which is a protein ligand docking. Now, before we start off, let me give you a little bit of introduction about protein ligand docking. It is basically uh, the ligand or the small molecule, it is binding to the protein and it is releasing some energy and it is being stable. So we can virtually see that using softwares and we can check the delta G values or the Gibbs free energy values and we can visualize that docking and the places, the plausible places where it can dock using certain softwares. So here is an article in Nature Protocols. You can go through this. It is a very good article. You can just go through the abstract and that's going to give you a basic idea of the protein ligand docking. Now before we start off, um, you need to download a couple of softwares to do the protein ligand docking. The first software would be Pyrex. You can go to this uh, link which would be provided in the description and you can download the software. So you need, all you need to do is hit download and it's going to download the software then you need to install the software and you're good to go. It is a free software. So I won't download it because I've already downloaded it earlier and the next one that we need would be open babel now again you need to go to this link which we provided in the description you need to hit download and you need to install the software and the third software that you need to, that you need to download is pymol so this is the software where you can uh, graphically visualize the docked structure after you have performed the docking so Go to this link which we provide in the description then hit download now and it's going to take you to this part of the page and you can download whatever your uh, requirement is uh, depending on whether it is Windows or Mac or Linux. So after you install all the softwares then you need to do another little thing that is download the structure of the protein that you need to dock and the ligand that you need to talk. So I have already thought of what I am going to be downloading for the protein and the ligand. So let's go to RCSB that is protein data bank site. So this is the protein data bank site and over here you can uh, basically download the sequences of various protein entries that are there in the protein data bank and also the various structures the three-dimensional structures that are there. So uh, the, the uh, structure that I'm going to download is the, the, protein, the protein data bank ID is 1RO5. So this is a specific ID for a specific protein. If you know the ID, it's very good, but you can also write the name of the protein and you're going to get a couple of results and you can download from that. So I'm going to select 1RO5. So this is my protein and this is a protein that is responsible for the, uh, for the quorum sensing in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So this is a bacterial protein and the protein, the name of the protein is acyl homocyrin lactone synthase. So there was a paper released uh, a couple of months back and I was a part of that paper and uh, we have worked on this uh, quorum sensing in Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Acinetobacter. So this is one of the proteins that we worked on and we saw the, uh, the protein ligand docking with, uh, with 1RO5 which is the acyl homocyrin lactone synthase. So I'm going to demonstrate using this protein. So what you need to do for the download, you have the display files and the download files on your right corner. You just need to hit the download files, you have the faster sequence and a couple of other different formats. Uh, either you can download the PDB format which is the standard protein data bank format for proteins or you can download the PDBX slash MMCIF format. So I'm going to recommend downloading this PDBX slash MMCIF format because this format is always recognized by Pyrex whereas the PDB format is sometimes may sometimes not be recognized by Pyrex. 
so we need to download the pdbx mmcif so hit pdbx mmcif and it's going to prompt you to download so i'm going to download it on my desktop inside docking tutorial so i've already downloaded it so i'm not going to download it anymore so let's cancel this out and the next thing that you need to do is download the um the small ligand molecule that you need to dock with so for that i'm going to go to pub chem this is another software uh sorry this is another website where you can download uh structures of small molecules or small chemicals and the one that i'm going to download is betulinic acid so betulinic acid is basically a triterpenoid which is which can bind to these um, these um, acyl homoserin lactones and can inhibit the quorum sensing mechanism in certain bacteria so i'm going to hit this link and it's going to open up this page and you can see the 2d structure and the 3d structure over here you can go to download and over here you have the 2d structure and the 3d confirmer we are not going to deal with the 2d structure we need the 3d 3d confirmer so we're going to download the sdf format we're going to hit save and it's going to prompt us to download go to desktop and over here i'm going to just make this simple by calling it ligand.sdf so you save it and there you have it now you have the protein and also the uh, ligand for the docking purpose now let's move into pyrex and we can perform the docking so this is the pyrex window that that it's going to open when you hit on pyrex the icon that that you have installed um okay so before we start off with pyrex what we need to do we have downloaded the um we have downloaded the ligand molecule in dot sdf format now the thing with pyrex is that it cannot uh, recognize this sdf format this is where the open babel software comes handy so let's open open babel So this is the open babel software the window what I'm gonna do I'm gonna convert this SDF into a PDB format right so that we can use it inside Pyrex so my input format on the left it's going to be SDF you can select from a couple of formats that you have and I'm gonna um, insert the molecule so it's in desktop so this is my molecule I'm going to insert this and I want to convert this into a PDB so that is also selected so this is the format that I want to convert it to and once you do that the output file the output file you can specify the path of the output file so I'm going to hit this three dots and uh, my docking tutorial folder is already open so I'm going to say ligand underscore convert it so and I'm gonna hit save and after everything is done you don't have to mess with all these options in the middle all you need to do is hit convert and there you go you have one molecule converted so let's minimize this and you can see you have the ligand converted dot pdb file now we are ready to go into pyrex and perform the docking first we need to insert the two molecules that we have just downloaded and one of them we have just converted so we're going to hit either this load molecule icon or we can go to file and we can hit load molecule so let's go to desktop and the folder and we're going to we're going to we're going to uh, insert one at a time because both of them cannot be selected at once so let's insert the protein and this is the protein you can see over here and let's do it once more I'm going to hit this icon it's going to take me to the last open folder 
click on the molecule and open so I have the protein and the ligand so next thing what I need to do I need to make the software know that this is my protein and this is my ligand so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna right click on the 1RO5 molecule I'm gonna go to autodoc and I'm gonna say make macromolecule you can see we have two options make ligand and make macromolecule so I'm gonna hit make macromolecule so that's going to convert it and make the Pyrex software know that this is the protein or the macromolecule and same for the ligand I'm gonna right click it I'm gonna to go to autodoc and I'm gonna hit make ligand so now my software knows that this is the protein and this is my ligand next all we need to do we need to come down over here let me increase this a little bit I'm gonna hit select molecule you can see that uh, one ligand is selected and a macromolecule has been generated which is of the format PDBQT and this is the path where the macromolecule has been generated so all that is done next what we need to do we need to hit forward on the right and that's going to give us this little box now this is very important so for this tutorial what I'm going to do I'm going to do a blind duck what is a blind duck blind duck is something when you don't know the the uh, relative space where the ligand is going to bind in the protein so what do you do you scan the whole protein for the uh, space where the ligand is going to bind so actually this box is that space that you specify where you want to search for the space uh, search for the ligand binding site so what I'm going to do I'm going to increase the box you can see when you click on the box you have this uh, big circle so the big spheres and you can stretch the box out to all the sides on all the four sides I mean all the six sides rather and you can make the protein come inside the box by making the box a bit larger so this is the process of blind talking so we are we are not sure where the ligand is going to bind so what we're going to do we're going to select the whole protein we're going to make the space available to the whole protein inside the box so that it can search throughout the protein and uh, and and search for this uh, search for this site where the ligand is going to bind so I'm going to put the whole protein inside the box so you can just move this around you can left click and just move it so that it can rotate or you can zoom in and zoom out by scrolling up and scrolling down on your mouse so I'm gonna stretch this a little bit all you need to do you need to check the borders and you need to make sure that the protein is not moving out of the borders so that's what I'm doing I'm checking the borders and making sure the proteins are not moving out of the borders and you don't need to put the ligand inside the box as well because uh, that's the only ligand we are going to dock the protein with so now it sort of looks all right yes the whole protein inside the box let's increase this a little bit and we're good to go so after this what do you need to do you need to hit forward now this Pyrex this virtual screening software this is using something called the Autodoc Vina so Autodoc Vina can be run um, I mean irrespective of having Pyrex or not but this Pyrex has the integrated Autodoc Vina software inside it that is why you can see over here it is written Autodoc and the ligands of the macromolecules are inside this Autodoc so next we're going to hit forward and it is going to work through some uh, codes in Python and it's going to analyze the binding site 
and finally it is going to give us the result once it is 100% complete. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. All right, so our docking is complete and you can see over here the analysis is given. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has got nine relative sites where the ligand can bind to the protein. Uh, so with this, with this data, we can analyze the most plausible site where the ligand can bind with the binding affinity value. So the binding affinity, more negative is the binding affinity, more uh, better the ligand has has been bound to the protein. So out of these nine, uh, nine binding sites, the binding site which is in the first that is having uh, minus 7.6 kilocalorie per mole this is the place where the protein has bound to the uh, bound to the ligand with maximum affinity so if we want this data uh, if we want to uh, visualize this data uh, later what we can do we can uh, just save this data but by using this uh, icon and it is going to be saved as a csv file all right, so the last thing that remains is uh, we need to visualize this docking inside uh, PyMol. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up PyMol. So let's open up PyMol. This is the user interface of PyMol. And next, what we need to do, we need to get the, um, the molecule, the the molecule after we have docked it. So it is saved in your C drive. Users go to your uh, folder, whatever it is, and inside your folder, you have this .mgl tools. So you need to click on that, go to the folder of Pyrex, go to macromolecules, and over here you can see 1 out of 5. And you can see over here, this is the output of the um, of the docked ligand molecule and this is the protein so what i'm going to do i'm going to drag this onto pymol right and i'm going to drag this also onto pymol so you can see now let me minimize this you can see it is docked somewhere over here on the protein now the cool thing about pymol and once you have docked the protein and the ligand with Pyrex is that you can visualize all those nine sites that we had. All these nine sites that are here, you can visualize it in PyMol. So what you need to do, you need to come over here and you can hit this single arrow button and it's going to change its site according to your, uh, according to the places that it has been docked. So if I hit once, it goes to a different site. If I hit again, it goes to a different site. If I hit again, it's go it goes to a different site. Fifth position, sixth, it goes somewhere at the back. Seventh, it again comes at the front. Eighth, somewhere at the back. And ninth. So these are the plausible nine uh, different sites where it has been docked. Um, you can check the docked places or if you want to produce the pictures of the relative docked sites, you can uh, save the different dock positions by going to file and you can uh, export the image into a PNG and that's going to export the image and uh, you can visualize the various different dock sites you can change the i mean you can change the layout of the mo you can change the layout of the molecule of the protein molecule the ligand molecule you can change the color for better contrast you can do all of that using pymo so that was it for this video if you liked this video and if you want this kind of videos to come out very often so please do comment and share with someone who would need to watch it and 
there are some other videos over here which you can just go and watch uh, I would recommend watching the bioinformatics or the biology with Python series that I have done the replication transcription and translation using Python and until the next time